when we design our page, there are a lot of elements which we will use repetitively. These elements can be something like a heading or a paragraph element, a text paragraph element. In order to create consistency and without having us having to restyle them all the time, we can create something called a style guide. A style guide is useful as it allows us to set some very basic styles and makes it very easy for us to later on then adjust these styles. It also allows us to set some of the fonts which we are going to use throughout our project. And since we said that our basic fonts are going to be Roboto, we need to set them in Webflow itself. Let's go about now and start creating a style guide. I have taken the liberty to delete everything we have done so far. So my home page looks empty and I have no other pages besides these utility pages. They were added automatically by Webflow. Let's go about now and add a second page, which we are going to call style guide. Um, and that's it. Let's create that page. And basically in order to create a style guide, all we have to do is we drag and drop a few elements into the page and set some basic design elements on them. All right. The first thing we want to do is we want to set the standard font on our page. And we said we want to use Roboto. As you can see right now, the standard font is set to Arial. Let's change that. I'm here on the body element. There's only one element currently on the page and we are, so we are on this body element. And if I click here in the selector where I can normally add a class name, I can choose the HTML tag body all pages. Let me do that. And that allows us to style the basic settings of all the bodies we have throughout our page. So every page is going to have a body element and basically with this body all pa uh, pages, selection, we can style all these body elements. And as you can see here, the standard font for all body elements is currently Arial. Let's go about and change that to Roboto. There we go. And the other current setting, the standard color is this grayish black. Let's go about and change that to proper black. So now throughout all body elements, all pages, we have Roboto and really black font. <clears throat> Let's test that out uh, by adding a heading paragraph, a heading to our page and see whether that worked. There we go. The heading is now font Roboto and uh, font color of black. As you see, there are different types of headings ranging from H1 to H6. H1 being the biggest, H6 the smallest. When we design our page, we should always only have one H1 heading. H1 really is the title of our page. And all the other headings should be H2, H3 or sm smaller. And you can imagine H2 headings more as like section headings and H3 as like subheadings along those lines. But only having one H1 heading is very helpful later on for our search engine optimization. And it helps search engines to really understand what is the main title of a page and also drives our user flow uh, neatly. So make sure later on to remember to always only add one H1 heading. Anyways, let's style, up, style all the H1 headings. And in order to do that, I'm again going to click into the selector and select all H1 headings. And we said that the font is supposed to be Roboto Slab for headings. And we select a weight of bold. Now let's add a second heading. H2 headings. And again, I'm going to select all H2 headings select Roboto Slab and 
700 bolt. We can see if medium makes more sense. No, bolt should probably make be the case here. And then let's add an H3 heading. And again, we're selecting all H3 headings. We'll go to slab, and here it might make sense to set that to medium, not as heavy anymore. There we go. Now let's add um, all right, these headings, the style guide just looks a bit squeezed to the left hand side. So let's just quickly get some organization into that. I'm going to add a section element. Section elements are like um, diff elements. They are used to structure our content on the page. However, you cannot nest section elements within other elements. So section elements can only be nested within the body, however, not on, not on a deeper level. And we are going to target that section style guide section and just give it a bit of a padding of, let's say, 40. So that looks a bit nicer when we design our side guide. Okay, perfect. Let's now add another element. And this time we're going to add a paragraph element. And make sure that this goes into our section and then select it. Select all paragraphs and we can go about giving it some styling. So Roboto is a font that already makes sense. Uh, the size is 16 pixels. Again, that could maybe be increased to 16 pixels and we could, no. Okay, let's, let's select this paragraph element, select all paragraphs again. And here we're just going to increase the size of the pixels, size of the font slightly to 16 pixels, make it a bit bigger. And we change the line height to 24 pixels so that, the, that there's a bit more spacing between the different lines. Then I want to add one other element and that's going to be text, bl text block element. So a text block element is, is, a, is a text element nested within a div. And we select that. And these elements, they are set by uh, Webflow, so there's no standard HTML element for them. So we cannot select all text block elements, for example. Instead, we're going to give it a class called subheading. And here, just in case you want to add a subheading, we're going to select Roboto. We're going to make it a bit lighter and increase the font size to 24 maybe, and let's say this is 30. So you just have to experiment a bit with these different th settings to come up with styles that apply to you and how you like it. It's obviously, it's just a trial and error in order to really figure out what styles fit you and how you like it. Don't sweat it if you don't get it right at the beginning.